Thanks, Pam. Try and get my head around this technology. Yeah, I was very, very lucky, I guess, to, uh, to grow up in a small uh, farming community of South Royanna. And um, it was an absolute privilege to grow up there. And um, I was one of those boys that used to run amok that learned to drive a tractor as soon as my legs were long enough to um, operate the pedals on a tractor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so it was a, a great uh, time and period in my life and certainly gave me an understanding of uh, risk taking and, and what happens when things go wrong. Um, a lot of my pr presentations are going to be visual. Um, with the Safe Farming Tasmania Reference Group, we're doing some, we've got some initiatives going on, and one of the things we're doing is uh, creating an in, a general induction video. So some of the clips from the induction video are going to be presented, and uh, you guys will get a, a chance to have a bit of a first up sneak peek of what's coming up. Yeah, Philip John, I'm the Senior Health and Safety Consultant with the Safe Farming Tasmania Program. The Tasmania pitch is not a lot different to um, to the mainland because, you know, at the end of the day with the, the population, we're, um, uh, we're still having that consistent run of injuries and, and fatals, um, which again tells us we've still got a lot of work to do. Yeah, during my time as an inspector, I guess I've been exposed to, to way too many fatalities and they've, um, they've been varying from tractor rollovers to... Uh, people getting tangled and caught up in machinery. Um, and the other side of that is some really horrific injuries that have been caused by, you know, people getting crushed between um, machinery and uh, uh, falling and things like that. So it's, um, you know, there's been some yeah, really bad stuff happen over the years. The Safe Farming Program is an initiative of the state government. Um, it's part of their Cultivating Prosperity uh, commitment. And uh, the program was set to run for three years. Um, and from my perspective, I guess on a personal side of things, I'm just extremely lucky that I've, um, and I feel privileged to be able to work in that space. Uh, having grown up on a little dairy farm on the northwest coast of Tassie myself, so um, for me it's an honour to be able and a privilege to be able to work with our community to, to try and make a difference to try and stop some of this stuff from happening. So the uptake, uptake's been fantastic. Uh, I think I've um, sat down in one on one with about 120 odd farmers to date. Um, and then the other side of it is I'm doing a lot of presentations and, and um, working with our next generation of farm managers coming through. So that gives us the opportunity to get to these um, um, future farm managers and just reinforce the, the message of how important safety is to their businesses. Because um, sadly, from a, an inspector perspective, I've seen um, you know, some, some uh, fatalities destroy businesses. And, and we're talking families here, you know, we're talking um, real life situations and real life people. So, you know, it's just so sad to see that sort of thing happening. Oh, look, one of the great things with this program is that the program's over, well, it's guided by a reference group, and that's my, the major key stakeholders in the, uh, in the industry here in Tasmania. So uh, I get the opportunity to go and, um, I guess, sell the message about far, uh, farm safety and how important it is to their businesses. Um, I can just tell them about the program and what it is I can do personally to help them through that process. Um, I concentrate on trying to keep things as simple as we can. And the good thing, I guess, is that we've got some really good tools and resources that we've pulled together to be able to help people do that. So, um, you know, they can pull together a safety management system or, or communicate their farm safety rules very easily. I get the opportunity to sit down with workers as well. And one of the key messages I say to them is that at the end of the day, none of us are under the pump that much. We have to take shortcuts. You know, we don't need to have a shilby right moment. Um, and one of the, the things I really like to impress with workers when I'm talking to them is that, um, look, whatever you're going to do, just take that little bit of time to stop and think about what you're going to do before you do it. And I guess most importantly is think of the consequences if it goes wrong, because the consequences can be catastrophic. So to all the Tasmanian farmers out there, safety is one of the most important parts of your business that you need to get your head around. Uh, it's not too hard. There is help out there. The program's there to help you with this. So all you've got to do is put your hand up and it's free. So um, it's, uh, it's really interesting from my perspective, I guess, growing up on a, on a little farm and, and being a boy that was introduced to, to things as I grew up. As I said, my, as soon as my legs were long enough to, uh, to operate the pedals on a tractor, I learned to drive. Uh, one of my first tasks was grass harrowing in the paddocks and um, being a young fella and uh, being a bit gung-ho, one of my uh, favourite things to do was um, the first run around the outside of the paddock was to try and get the right-hand front wheel of the tractor as close as I could to the corner strainer. And of course, the first thing I did when I got on the tractor was unlock the brakes. And um, 
my first reaction was to uh, to head to the corner, stand on the inside brake and swing the tractor around without braking momentum. And uh, that was when I was exposed to the first um, set of consequences for taking risks because my dad caught me. And I can tell you the, the consequences after that weren't real good, particularly going back in the old days. And uh, dad's number nine, I think it was, probably felt like a number nine turn up the backside, sort of taught me very quickly about the, uh, the consequences of taking risks. Um, the Safe Farming Tasmania program, uh, as you can see there, was set up in May in uh, 2015, and it was part of the state government's Cultivating Prosperity Commitment. And um, I think it's one of probably the, the, the great things to come along in the rural sector in regards to trying to uh, help people get their head around what they need to do in that safety space. And there's so much, as everyone knows, there's so much information out there. And one of the bigger problems, I guess, was where do we start with all this? What do we need to be able to apply to our uh, to our own situation? Um, it's an agreement between WorkSafe and Depipwi. I'm very, very lucky that I answered to the CEO of WorkSafe Tasmania and also uh, the Director of Agri-Growth in Depipwi. And um, what, what we do and with this program means that this program was taken standalone with the PIPWI, so there's no threat of enforcement for uh, any of the people I work with. So every, we, everything we do and everything we generate, everything we talk about is all in total confidence. It's designed to raise awareness of farm safety. Um, and I guess the, the main part of what I do is about encouraging that conversation. So for farmers and farm workers, it's about trying to convince them not to put it in a too hard basket, that look, there is help out there, it is available, and we can do something along those lines and provide some practical resources and tools to be able to help them get their head around that, uh, that safety space and put some practical things in place in their workplaces. Our aim is just basically to reduce injuries and illnesses across the, uh, and improve the performance across the, the rural sector. Um, because as we know, there is a lot going on out there. I think the statistics at the moment is that there's 15.33 um, uh, people um, dying in fatalities across farms in Australia at the moment, and that compares to 1.93 for all other 1.93 for all other industries. So it's pretty scary stuff, and it just uh, goes to show we have got a lot of work to do in that space. And you know, as late as probably a month ago, there was a, a chap died on a on a tractor in Scottsdale, and um, it's just absolutely soul destroying, you know, when you hear this sort of thing going on all the time. So I guess it just proves that we do have a lot of work to do in that space and we'll continue on down that pathway to try and improve things and stop some of this carnage from happening. Um, I mentioned the reference group members. You can see for yourself there, um, I'm very lucky that uh, I've got a group of professional people who are as equally as passionate as what I am about trying to uh, reduce some of the injuries and accidents in the in the rural sector, and I'd just like to acknowledge some of the, the members on the uh, reference group that are in the audience today. Um, we do some, we are doing some great work. We are, we are achieving. We're making a huge difference out there, a huge positive difference. So, it's um, work that's um, uh, very rewarding, and uh, and as I said before, I think we believe, truly believe, we are making a difference. Um, and the bottom point there again, just to reinforce that, is the the uh, program is overseen by a steer, steering committee, which consists of the CEO of WorkSafe and uh, Director of Agri-Growth in Depipwi. And uh, I guess very importantly is chaired by um, one of the reference group members and a farmer, Corey Spencer. Uh, Corey's a terrific guy and we'll hear a little bit about what he does from Corey, the farmer perspective in a video clip shortly. But Corey, as I said, is terrific to work with and uh, he does a really good job of chairing the, the, uh, the committee. And um, it's great, I guess, that Corey's probably one of the future leaders and, and one of the innovators in the rural sector. So it's terrific to work with him. So some of our achievements to date, uh, the Key Stakeholders Reference Group has been established um, and there's lots of partnerships going on. To date, there's about 130 farmers I've been and sat down and had that chat with, that discussion with, that's that one-on-one -on -one, uh, business visit. And it's an absolute pleasure for me to be able to go and sit down, enjoy the scones and the jam and cream and the cups of tea with real milk in it. It takes me back to my childhood days. Um, I'm continually responding to, to requests for advice and guidance via phone, emails, uh, you name it. And it's interesting to know that the, the um, interest in what we're doing now is going outside of Tasmania. Um, and I quite often get calls from interstate and even New Zealand in regards to what we're doing in the, in the safety space in Tasmania. So the message is getting out there and uh, it's interesting to note that our interstate colleagues are, um, 
uh, have us fairly much under scrutiny to see how this is all unfolding and, and evolving in regards to what they might be able to do to help uh, put further help out there for farmers in a rural space. I'm continually doing presentations to groups and uh, in particular students and farm managers because I think one of the great things in this program is I get the opportunity to work with our TAFE colleges and educational institutions and that gives me the opportunity to get to our next generation of farm managers coming through the system. And um, those farm managers, I guess, I get the opportunity to impress on them just how important uh, managing safety and getting on top of the safety practices in their in their business is just as important to, as the other things that they need to uh, consider, you know, things like quality environment and so on and so on. Um, and uh, it's just really rewarding that when I do do a presentation that I get someone call me and say, Phil, can you come and um, sit down, we'll have a cup of tea and have a bit more of a chat about that and see what we can do to, uh, to progress that and, and uh, incorporate it into their business. And um, I'm continually attending many information sessions and seminars, industry groups and uh, workshops and forums. And um, it's, it's really, uh, I guess it's a, it's a bonus that if we get to go and do that because we can continually keep that message going and that's, that conversation continuing. I get to participate in lots of um, trade shows and conferences and things like that and it's really important that I get the opportunity and I have done has gone to Flinders Island and, and particularly Cape Barren Island um, and I've got a few photos later on down the track just to show some of the areas I go into. Did I mention the fact that I'm a paid tourist? I, uh, I do I believe have the best health and safety job in Australia because some of the places I get to go and see and again I'll share some photos later on down the track and there's one photo in particular of a shearing shed down at Ooze it was just like stepping back in time. Um, it was a, a really uh, big feather in the cap of the program and, and the reference group in particular that WorkSafe Month was launched in uh, 2015. Minister, um, our uh, Treasurer Peter Gutwin come and launched it there and it was done at Winemaking Tasmania um, and they were one of my original clients and uh, they really embraced what we're doing and, and it, uh, the manager of uh, Winemaking Tasmania, Jonathan Lord, he was just full of praise about what the reference group is uh, sorry what the program is all about what the reference group do and how much the information helped him get his head around what he needed to do in that safety space so he went from having nothing to being extremely confident and having some basic policies and procedures and more importantly a commitment from the workers to embrace it and um, has implemented stuff in the uh, in the safety space within that business and it also led to some discussions with Cameron Blight um, who was a health and wellbeing advisor with WorkSafe at the time so it's, a, it's progressed into the mental health side of things and also uh, the physical side of things as well. So it's been a big bonus there for, uh, for a business like that. Um, I've done a lot of work with Selena and the Rural Youth Group too. And it's, um, the Rural Youth are one of the key members of the, the reference group. And I, Selena's in the audience today. And I guess it would be um, uh, correct, I guess, Selena, to say that probably what we did do in that space was demystify a lot of the stuff and the health and safety obligations and whatever that your rural youth have when, uh, when they have their field days. And um, I think probably the bonus that came from that was we got the opportunity to talk about that and hopefully it simplified things and it certainly made Selena's life a lot easier for a good while. So that's an ongoing discussion that we have and uh, as part of what we do we're looking at how we can continue to simplify but also help cover off on the obligations that um, rural youth have in that safety space. Um, the Safe Farming Program get an opportunity to contribute to the to the quad bike discussion and that's um, uh, a very interesting debate that continues to go on. Um, so we're a member of the uh, Minister's Quad Bike Safety Task Force, also a member of the Interdepartmental Committee. So at the national level, we're uh, continuing that quad bike discussion and, and the momentum's building there. So hopefully down the track, we'll be able to do something about actioning all this um, carnage that's going on in that quad bike space. Um, and we're also a member of the Small Business Network. So that's the Heads of Workplace Safety Authority Small Business Network Group. And we met in Sydney a couple of weeks ago and, and we did presentations there. And uh, that's, um, I guess, networking PAM in a, in a larger scale from a national level. And uh, the network group members are, are really, really uh, keen to pick up on what we're doing in the safety space from the rural sector. So um, I'm going to have to go to uh, 
uh, to Darwin and talk to the people up there and I think back to South Australia and have a talk to them as well. So um, again, that's one of the benefits of what we do and it's continuing that networking, that conversation in that safety space and picking it up at a national level now. So it's something that we're really proud of. Uh, I guess that final point there is that the Safe Farming Program has become a trusted source of um, quality uh, health and safety information to the point where it's um, it's going outside of Tasmania and interstate and even into New Zealand. So it's um, something we're extremely proud of. And uh, the good point, as Pam said earlier on, is that AgFest this year that uh, Minister Rockcliffe announced a, um, a four-year ex four extension to the program. So um, that's going to really help us accelerate that conversation and do some more positive work in that space. And, and the bottom line is, is to help our farmers get their head around what they need to do in that safety space. And I guess most importantly, have the confidence to have a crack at it and do it themselves rather than put it in a too hard basket. Um, one of the first things I did when, we, when I came into this uh, role was identified the need for, for some basic guidance for farmers to help them get their head around what they need to do in that safety space. So. Um, I begged, borrowed and legally stole whatever I could to, to collate some information and put it into simplistic terms. And the first thing we did was develop and launch this guide. And um, it's been that well accepted that it has gone to New Zealand and, and I know it's now gone to Darwin, uh, to Northern Territory, it's gone to South Australia. And it's one of the benefits of harmonisation of the, the health and safety laws, I guess, is that any state in Australia can use this stuff and, and, and uh, incorporate it in their workplaces and it's, um, it's going to help people comply with the laws. Very simplistic. Uh, it was interesting to hear um, the, the conversation earlier on about keeping things understandable and what have you. So what we've done with this is we've taken as much of the legal speak out of it as we can. We've said things in a couple of sentences and the really good part about it is it's supported by a resource USB that's got sample policies, procedures, um, some really good video clips on uh, things like quad bike safety, tractor safety, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the publication is actually on the bottom of the uh, on the bottom of the uh, the list there. You can see as well. And there's copies of it over in the corner. If people want to help themselves, um, by all means, please go and grab some and take out and spread the word. Uh, this was the launch of the the guide in um, August. Uh, sorry, at AgFest in May in 16. Uh, Corey's at the lectern there, the chairman of the reference group, just talking about uh, how we went about this and, and what it means to people. Um, one of the great things that's coming on is the induction. Here's a snippet of this. Corey Spencer and I'm a farmer from Bracknell in Northern Tasmania. I'm also chairman of the Safe Farming Tasmania Reference Group. One of the initiatives of the Reference Group is a series of short videos designed to enhance your on-farm safety inductions. So please utilise these videos to enhance your on-farm safety. Yeah, Philip John, I'm the Senior Health and Safety Consultant with the Safe Farming Tasmania Program. At the end of the day, none of us are under the pump that much. We have to take shortcuts. You know, we don't need to have a sure we're right moment. Whatever you're going to do, just take that little bit of time to stop and think about what you're going to do before you do it. And I guess most importantly is think of the consequences if it goes wrong, because the consequences can be catastrophic. And I mean, they could kill you. Um, I'll just pause that there for a second. This is the, the uh, funding extension um, uh, announcement at AgFest this year. 
Um, in regards to the induction video, what we've done with that is we've tried to, to develop something that um, is going to be nice and simplistic for people that have literacy issues and what have you. Um, the video series is designed to complement the, uh, the paperwork side of stuff, so it's part of that conversation. And you can see there we've gone with the generic crosses and ticks, so we put the worst case scenario up first, we freeze it with the cross, then we come in with the tick where it's done the right way. And the, uh, the checkbox at the end is designed for the person that's either doing the induction is to, uh, for the person doing the induction to elaborate on the way they do those particular points in their workplace because every workplace is different. Um, beauty of the uh, induction book, uh, the induction video series is it's also complemented with a small book that can be given to workers at, um, at their induction. So they can write notes on it, they can take it away, they can use that to, to remember and recall and, and go back over what they were told at the induction. Um, the good thing about this too is it's all going to be put on USB and the booklet will be printed and it's all free to everybody. So the reference group members will have all this information and what have you listed on their websites and it'll be freely available. So it's a really great initiative and I think it's going to be a first um, in, in Australia in regards to having a series like that. So the first video is, is a generic thing. You saw at the start of it the, the types of things that it covers, up on, covers off on and my mind's already thinking about what we can do moving forward. So what we're thinking is we'll probably do some uh, further video clips in specific areas. So say for instance, dairy have their own unique risks and hazards. So we'll follow that up with a video in that area and then we'll progress to fruit growing, you know, sheep farming, et cetera, et cetera. So it'll lead to a series of videos being unfolded, I guess, over probably a 12 to 18 month period. As I said, this was the uh, uh, announcement of the, the uh, launch, uh, sorry, the extension of the program at uh, AgFest this year and is very, very much a, a proud moment because um, uh, to, to have it extended by another four years, as I said earlier on, gives us the opportunity to really gain some traction now and, and, and keep that conversation going. And this is just a little clip from Corey from a farmer's perspective. I think I might have to do this manually. So my name's Corey Spencer and we're on a property at Bracknell called Sand Park. We also have a harvesting contracting business where we employ itinerant labour over the summer months. Farm safety has been a really big issue, not only for us, but for every farming business in Tasmania with the, with the deaths that have happened over the years. And I think you know, it's very important going forward that, that we all get on board and, and start imp implementing some, even just some basic safety protocols into our business. The, the biggest risk for us is probably fairly simple stuff most of the time, um, being aware of your surroundings and and probably you know simple things like cutting yourself, um, you know jumping off off implements or tractors and you know damaging knees, legs, that sort of thing. Um, you know at the end of the day, it's just really basic stuff that that most of the time causes the biggest problems. So we go through a, uh, a, a sit-down induction process um, where they, you know, they have a checklist that we tick off at the end of that induction to make sure they understand everything that's gone through. But basically it, it takes an hour and we sit down with each employee. I think it's important to sit down individually with employees and, and go through it so that if anyone has any difficulties, they, they are willing to speak up as opposed to being in a group situation. They might, might not ask a question you know, for fear of being embarrassed. So it's very important that you do it one on one um, if, if you're able to. And then once they've done that, we, we have safe work procedures on every machine, which they, are, they get run through before they get to operate that machinery. So when we're employing itinerant workers from non-English speaking backgrounds, we have to be really careful to make sure the messages we're relaying to them are getting understood and vice versa when they're telling us something that we understand what they're trying to tell us because sometimes you know, the message can get lost and something that we're trying to understand from them can be quite simple to us, but to them it can be a serious matter that we're not understanding properly. So it's just very important that we make sure what we're telling them is understood and vice versa what they are saying to us that we're understanding properly. I think it's important farmers realise they're not on their own when it comes to managing safety. There's some really good government initiatives out there, starting with the Safe Farming Safely in Tasmania from the Safe Farming um, Tasmania program. It's a great little booklet. It also comes with a USB stick. It's got all the um, safe work procedures, uh, inductions, guidelines, everything like that that you could possibly want, and it's 
free, readily available. Yeah, it's been a really great help in our business using this guideline. Um, the little green USB stick never comes out of my computer. I use it all the time. Uh, and it's really simple, user-friendly. Anyone can get on it, put, type their name into it, uh, or type their business name into it, and you've got a ready-to-go safe work procedure that you can then use with your, you know, if you've got one or 16 employees, you can then go out and utilise that with them. I promised a tour around Tasmania and some of the workplaces I get to go to. Um, this is at, um, at Bracknell um, and it's um, Grand Arches property and uh, to go to these sorts of places and see some of the innovation and, and the work that these people do, it's, uh, it's, it's very special. This one's on, on uh, Flinders Island looking back, uh, looking back towards Streslecki and Cape Barron Island. Um, and it's great there to go and do some work in the community and just, as I said, continue that safety discussion. And this is from Cape Barron Island, looking back to Flinders Island. And uh, I was really, really um, privileged to go to Cape Barron Island and sit down with the Indigenous community there. You know, there's about 70 odd people. And what they've done is created an island safety commitment, I guess you'd call it. And, um, you know, they do have their issues over there. Isolation is one of the big problems. Um, they do have a quad bike on the island now, so they're pretty keen to get their head around what they need to do in that quad bike space, you know, with the knowledge of what's going on around the country with um, quad bike incidents and particularly the fatalities. So um, we got to, I, I guess that discussion resulted in, in the people of the uh, people of the island developing their own safety commitment. So they're looking out for one another and, and mentoring and buddying one another along the way. So that was a, a really good achievement. and. Uh, I get the opportunity to go back to Flinders, uh, sorry, to Cape Barren Island sometime soon, and we'll go over there and see how things are progressing. Um, but the feedback I'm getting via the phone and, and what have you is uh, really, really good that they're very impressed and, and it is making a difference over there in the way they approach safety in an isolated environment. And it's interesting, my colleague from Northern Territory, they're doing a lot of things in the, in the Indigenous space up in the Northern Territory. And again, it's taking it to remote communities and getting people to take ownership of it and uh, giving them some support along the way to make things happen in that safety space. Uh, King Island, I was there a few years ago and um, uh, when I was managing work covers um, health and safety advisory service, we went and actually took uh, a trainer over there for a, uh, to run some subsidised tra uh, training sessions for quad bike safety. And um, this is just a bit of a snippet from the island news when we were there and did that. Uh, interesting one, an asparagus farm at Bridport. Uh, Houston's farms at, um, at Richmond. And this is Muscle Row Bay, Muscle Row Beef. Um, and this is a really interesting farming enterprise down there, farming underneath all the wind towers, um, 50 odd, 60 odd wind towers down there. It's um, yeah, wonderful place. And I talked about some of the historical places. This is a shearing shed at Tall Hill at Ooze. And um, stepping inside that shearing shed was just like stepping back in time. And it, uh, you can see the original wool press there. I mean, it's still operable. It's, um, it's just amazing. It's um, some of our history and heritage being preserved. And the, and the Hessian bag hanging up on the, uh, in the ceiling. Uh, and that was their record in 1899 for the bales that they, uh, they produced that particular year. And that was all by hand too. That was hand clippers. There was no... Uh, mechanical stuff there, although they did go high tech in the early 1900s and installed a single single cylinder listed diesel motor that's still there and still operable. So um, as I said earlier on, I've got, a, I've got a fantastic job and for me it's great to be able to go and relate the past and, and uh, merge that into the future and what's going on because the, the uh, technology in that space is a lot different now. Um, there's a, a brochure on your on your tables, and um, that sort of it's got the contact details and speaks a little bit about the program and what it's all about. And I guess one of the things I'd like to do today is to for the people here that have uh, participated in this session, and for the people that are watching it online, is I guess the message is if you can just spread that message and tell people, look, there is help out there. Um, there is a constant flow of farmers putting their hands up for, for help and advice and guidance. And uh, that's what I do, and I'm very, very happy to go out and do that. Um, just before I close up and uh, throw open for questions, just a couple of things I'd like to say and some observations from our previous two speakers. Uh, John and Stephen, absolutely wonderful presentations and very, very powerful messages. And I do come across that sort of thing myself in, in what I do. 
Um, and I think it's just fantastic that the um, the the, ra the bar's been raised in that space, and uh, it is something that we all need to be aware of. Um, the statistics are very alarming, and um, I think it's just great messages that we can take out into that community. And again, it's like what I do: people aren't on their own. It's really only a matter of putting your hand hand up, and there is help there. Um, the Better Work Tasmania uh, program, Pam. I'd just like to. Uh, uh, thank you for what you do in that space. You've built a fantastic tool there. It's, um, I believe, it's one of the best concepts for the for the networking scenario that's come along for a long, long time. So I'd encourage everyone, if you haven't um, taken part or, or become a member of Better Work Tasmania, please do it. It is a, a fantastic tool, and I guess it's a, a, a perfect opportunity for us all to share our learnings and our experiences and and what have you, and do what we can in that safety space to try and stop some of those injuries and accidents from happening. Um, that's pretty much me, I guess. I'll, I'll just throw it open. Is there any questions from anybody? Thank you, Pam. Thank you. Um Thank you, Phil. Yes, I've got my green USB stick that I carry with me uh, everywhere in my briefcase. Phil, some of us might have watched uh, Utopia last night. Did anybody <laughs> see it? With the Workplace Health and Safety Audit. Phil's not quite like that. <laughs> I can tell you from first-hand experience, whilst I work with AgriGrowth Tasmania and Phil's office is next door to mine, but I haven't seen him for three months. He's been out touring all those wonderful holiday destinations and tourist <laughs> destinations around, the, around the, 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 the entire state. Phil spends an awful lot of time working one-on-one, -on -one, and as a sideline, I actually operate a, a small uh, cherry orchard two and a half thousand tree orchard that employed 19 people last season. Phil came out and took me through um, the, uh, the, the manual. We worked through it and a comment that he made before and it's, it was up on the screen was no threat of enforcement. It was such a simple process to work through that and it's on the USB stick. All the templates are there. It's very, very easy and very, very simple to get you thinking about the small things that will make a real difference. And I think Corey said that one of the biggest risks when working through you know, farm safe initiatives are generally the fairly simple things that you need to do day in, day out. So for any of you that are out there in the rural community or working with members in the rural community, this is a fantastic program, a fantastic support um, mechanism for you. And can I just say, just to put some things into context, if I'm getting things right, here in Tasmania, if we've had twice as many people who have taken their own lives in rural communities here in Tasmania, as have been killed on roads, there's roughly 70 people have chosen to take their lives in regional communities, not in the cities, not in Hobart, not in Launceston, Burnie or Devonport, but in regional communities last year. And that is a very, very sobering thought. So thank you so much, John, Stephen and to Phil. Thanks, Howard. Thanks, Howard, for those kind words. Um, I just—I uh, don't know whether I take offence to the fact that I haven't been near the office for about three months, but um, I am a portable uh, portable office, I guess, and I do work statewide, and I do go wherever someone puts their hand up. Uh, sometimes it means I have to backtrack. Uh, it means I'm on the road a lot, so my greatest risk is probably the kilometres I do every year. Um, and it's interesting, how, from your perspective as, as a cherry farmer and uh, the, the reference to work safe and, and um, you know, everything we do is in confidence, so there's no threat of enforcement. Just over and above that, I'd just like to say from the WorkSafe perspective and from Mark Cocker, the CEO of WorkSafe Tasmania's perspective, Mark is absolutely brilliant in um, the support he provides me personally for this program. He, uh, he's really, really happy that we are out there making a difference or trying to make a positive difference. And Mark's uh, view on things is that, look, at the end of the day, 
Um, we're realists. Uh, there is difficulties in the rural sector. We've got to be innovators. You know, we've got to we've got to be able to solve problems the best way we can. Um, I know, as I shared my tractor story early on, you know, when I was growing up, um, we do what we need to do. But I guess the main thing is that we we leave the thought with people that look, whatever you do, just take that little bit of time to stop and think about what you're going to do before you do it. And I guess most importantly is think of the consequences if it goes wrong. And that spills over not just from the physical doing things in the workplace, also things from the mental side of things, you know, and the thinking through processes and what have you. So we're about simplicity. If you can say it in a sentence, don't write a book about it. Um, I love the, the, uh, the comment earlier on about the, the language thing. One of the things we want to do with that um, video is because of language barriers and things like that, we want to be able to try, well, literacy issues, we want to be able to try and simplify things as much as we can. Um, and I know uh, when I went to Howard's Cherry Farm, we had a look at the, the physical process. There was a couple of little issues there. I threw my old inspector's hat back on and, and I pointed out to Howard and I know Howard took those on board, prioritised and fixed those things ready for the, for the, next, um, for the next part of, of or the next season, basically. And I guess one of the main things from Howard is that it's very much like every other farming business. There's family members involved. And I said on one of the clips earlier on, you know, if something goes wrong in a workspace, it's, it can be a family member. And to see the um, the grief and everything that comes from that is just absolutely soul destroying. So I'll just keep soldiering on and we'll keep soldiering on the reference group, the Safe Farming Tasmania program and see what we can do to make a positive difference. So thank you very much for your support.